from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> and now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. Thank you for tuning in. Look at this story here. TV personality Debbie Matinopoulos. And I, I've met Debbie, by the way. I was on a TV show with her. Was it that show Test the Nation years ago? I think so. I was sitting right next to her. Mm-hmm. Debbie says she is hurt and surprised. you know why? Debbie Matinopoulos is hurt and surprised by her husband's divorce filing, which she learned about from Internet reports. The host of E's Daily 10 tells People magazine, I am extremely saddened by the dissolution of my seven-year relationship with my husband. Did she really say that, or was that a statement that was sent in by her publicist? That doesn't sound like something a person would say with a microphone in their face, you know. Jay Fairs, a music executive, filed for divorce, citing irreconcilable differences, according to Los Angeles court papers. Fairs, who wed Matinopoulos, 33, in July 2003, and separated from her, really? March 2008. March 2008. That's uh, eight months ago? Okay. Uh, is requesting that the court not award Matinopoulos spousal support. They both make a good living. Why should uh, she get spousal support? That makes sense. By the way, what kind of surprise is that? Your husband, let me understand, you separated with your husband in March 2008, and now in November 2008, he's getting a divorce. Okay. Matinopoulos, a two-time Emmy nominee and former co-host of The View, says, I am not a proponent of divorce. And I believe in working things out. So you can only imagine my extreme sadness and disillusionment when I was informed of my husband's divorce proceedings, much like you were, by reading them online. Now, there could be good reasons for this, Debbie, and I know since you're in the middle of this situation, you can't understand it, or you're embarrassed or hurt. But there could be good reasons for this. I have ended more than one relationship with an email or a voicemail or a text message because I'm tired of all the arguing. I don't know if you, Debbie, were arguing with your husband, Jay. I have no idea. But I, for one, got tired of the arguing, got tired of the, you know, but what about you? What about what you did? Forget about what I did. What about you? What did you do? Remember what you did? You did, you did this and you didn't do that. And you did. Tired of it. You know what? If I'm that, and, and by the way, I've said this more than once in the email, in the text message, <laughs> in the instant message, in the voicemail, I've said this. If I have that many flaws and imperfections, I'm the wrong guy for you. By the way, that is like kryptonite to women. Can I tell you something? When you tell a woman, you know, maybe I'm just the wrong guy for you, and you sound like you're totally in control, that drives them crazy. Take it from me. It drives them crazy. I've gotten to that jaded, cynical point in my life where I just believe that anybody who is complaining about me should go. <laughs> anybody who doesn't like me the way I am should hit the road, hit the bricks. Hit the road, Jacqueline. Get out. I mean, it's that simple. So it's easier to post this online or to send you a text or send you an email 
that to have to get into one of these protect, protracted discussions. People get hurt. People get annoyed. I know. But why is a phone call any better than an email? <laughs> I mean, how many people get a phone call that says, don't call me anymore? I don't want to see you anymore. How many people get that? Right? So, uh, I think sometimes uh, when you have been uh, doing Ring Around the Rosie for a while, at some point, it makes sense just to uh, put it in writing. It's done. That's that. Sign me. <laughs> Time to go. And you put the number two, you know, because it's a text message. Time to go. C U letter U down the road. <laughs> um, is there something wrong with doing that? Is there something wrong with sending a text message or, uh, you know, posting it on your blog? I'm done. I'm single again. I'm taking on all comers. What if you put that on your blog? You put it on your MySpace. Put it on your web space. On a web page? Put it up there. Is it really necessary to have that big last conversation? I keep hearing that song in my head from the Rocky movie, you know, the final countdown. You hear that song playing. Is it necessary to have that one last meeting at a coffee shop? Is it necessary to have that one last encounter, that one last drink, that one last meal? Is it necessary to make a big ritual or a ceremony out of it? It's done. Sorry, Debbie, the two of you have been separated for almost a year. You know what? I don't see what the big deal is. So I'm curious, do you have a problem with people sending you a text message saying, don't call me anymore, or it's over, or sorry we couldn't make it work, or an email, or leave a voice message? You have a problem with that? And do you find this particularly cold? Have you ever had it done to you? Did it hurt your feelings? Were you crying about this? Because, yeah, buddy, all they did was they left you a message and they said, don't call me anymore. Did that make you cry? Did it? I've got to know. You call me here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Debbie Matinopoulos, formerly of The View, is all upset because her husband filed a divorce. And they've been separated for eight months. And she read about it online. Is there a problem with that? Tom, like Tom it. Like it. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, that's our telephone number. Okay. So what the hell is the problem? Debbie Madmopoulos says she's saddened to hear that her husband is divorcing her. Not be one thing if he left her and posted a notice on the internet, <laughs> but they've been separated for eight months. Really, what's the problem with? Uh, Drop it a line or post something on your blog saying, that's it, I'm out. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Anthony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. How you doing? Doing great. Great. Well, I think I think it depends on the, uh, the, the nature of the relationship. I mean, they were married, um, but, uh, you know, you said you've ended some some uh, relationships for text messages and stuff. I think it depends if they've been dating or have been going out a long time. I mean, you know, because if you just text message a girl, say, hey, it's over, and then, you know, that's when they can come back and break the window to your car or, you know, provoke them even more. So I don't know. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. I, I For me, I just don't want to have the conversation anymore. We've been fighting. We've been arguing. We've been debating, discussing, comparing, contrasting. And uh, in my case, I don't know about you. In my ca case, we've been discussing all of my flaws, faults, foibles, all the things I do wrong, the things I say that are not funny, the things I do that are not entertaining, the uh, things I do that are annoying, whatever. 
After a while, I'm tired of it. You know what? All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the relationships that you've ended with uh, text messages and emails and stuff, were they, you know, one of your marriages or just, you know, a relationship? A uh, uh, the, the, only <laughs> the only reason it wasn't one of my marriages is because uh, only two of them have ended in the era of text messaging. Okay. And uh, in each case, it was somebody who wouldn't leave the house. <laughs> well, um, no, you, I think I had no choice there. but to talk it over with. I, I, I guess I could have flown a banner over the house or something. No, I think you did enough talking. Like, I think you had a point. You know, arguing and arguing and arguing. It's not going anywhere. What are you going to do? Just call her, say, come over, or, or call her and say, hey. I want to break up so it can just continue on another three days. I mean, yeah, you got a point, man. I'm you tired of it. I'm tired of it. We did the arguing. Clearly, I'm the wrong person for her. Right. That's it. I'm doing her a favor. All right, Tom. Great, man. Can you blow me up? Yes. Yes, I can. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Is it absolutely necessary to have that big, final, dramatic, in-person meeting when you're breaking up with somebody? I mean, come on. Norinda on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. How are you? Great. I think, you know what? It's not necessary, but I think that that's baloney. If they're mad enough to ask you out... Why not, you know, man enough to man up and... It has nothing you know to do with being mad enough. I've already done the talking. I've well, already heard, arguing. picture you picture me in this position, okay? I've already done the talking. I've already heard all the things that are wrong with me. All of the things I say and do that are inappropriate. All of my shortcomings. Everything about me that's wrong, wrong, wrong. So, as far as I'm concerned, you've already broken up with me in your head. You just haven't had the balls to walk away. I don't, I don't even If see. I am that imperfect... Why should I indulge you by giving you one final opportunity to tell me why I'm so terrible? I don't think it's indulging me. I just think that you're not man enough to hear what I need. And I've already heard it. I've heard it a hundred times. In most cases, it, I can recite it. Well, it probably is. There's probably a difference. When why you should arguing? I indulge somebody who has told me a hundred times what's wrong with me? Why, why should I say, you know what, let's have one last meeting so you'll have one last opportunity to tell me one more time why I'm so terrible? Maybe maybe in that case, okay, you might be right when everything is said and done over, like through a phone or something. I but mean, if I look, look, if I'm with somebody who is a wonderful person and it just didn't work out, that's one thing. But come on, if I'm with somebody where the arguing never stops where the debating and discussing and comparing and contrasting never ends, why should I give the other person still another opportunity to kick me in the hand? It's a little different from it just being posted on the Internet or on MySpace. I, I, I don't think it matters. even knowing what's going uh, it does, on. You know what? I, I'll tell you what. Some of these women, they, they don't even deserve that. I should just stop talking to them. Oh, my gosh. That's why I'm saying, you know, men don't have... I don't know the balls. They don't. They can't manage. Has nothing to do with say, it. Says this has nothing to do with having balls. Okay, listening to someone when screech at me does not mean I have balls. Oh please! If 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 everything is going on perfectly, okay, that's fine. When you guys are arguing and over the phone or calling somebody, meeting somebody, and telling them it's over, okay, that's fine. But when somebody just goes and breaks up with you over the Internet or MySpace... Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's take this story we're talking about here. Debbie Matinopoulos has been separated since March. She's been separated for eight months. But then, yeah, she wasn't woman enough to be able to take that it's all. So, so now, now she she's upset because she found out online that she's getting a divorce. Let me tell you something. If the guy's been gone eight months, it pretty much has already happened. Yeah, you could say that. If it's, I mean, if she already knew about it, but maybe he has been leading her on and on till he got somebody else. I, oh, if he were doing that, why would he be separated? Well, you know, some men tend to lead you on. Well, she didn't say that. All she said was that she learned about this online, and she was hoping to work things out. What about if during all this time he's they're supposedly broken up, but they're still having sex, or they're still, or he's still leading her on, and like, well, maybe things can work out because that's how some men are until they find somebody else, another, you know. Well, that's also how some women are, by the way. 
Maybe they are, but men, I think men are most likely. I know women who, who don't want to break up and don't want to break up and don't want to break up until they're out with one of their friends and they meet another guy. I think that goes the same for as towards men. Well, there you go. You know what, then? Send me a text message. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Edith, you're on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi, I love your show. I've been listening to you for six months, and you have saved me so much heartache. I love that. Uh, I I was married forever to my high school sweetheart, and so I've been divorced for three years now, and I'm just now dating. So um, it's kind of, you came in pretty handy, actually. Um, really? And, um, you have I no. Actually, by the way, darling, you have no idea how handy I can become. <laughs> I bet, <laughs> but. Here's the thing. I I tend to take out these guys to dinner when I'm going to break up with them and tell them in person. You take wait, let, you take them to dinner. I do. I do. Just so I let, let me understand that. just so I got the whole thing straight. Chances are because you believe that guys should take you out to dinner, you never took them out to dinner before and they should have seen that as a sign. If you were paying, something must be wrong. Uh yeah, I, yeah, exactly. See, you're so high. They don't get this. <laughs> so I'm very independent, and they're attracted to But then they want to, you know, manipulate the situation. And so when it doesn't go their way, then there's issues. So anyhow, I, I, I've done that to pretty much every guy because I want to give them some respect. Now, do you tell them before you order or after? How do you do that? After they've ordered. After they've <laughs> ordered. So you're waiting. Let me understand. You're waiting for the appetizer to arrive. And then you say, we have to talk. Or do you no, wait? No, no way. You I wait till the creme brulee? When do you do it? How was their week? How was their day? I don't like How was your week? How was your day? Hi, honey. Yeah, I don't I don't like guys that are needy. There are so many of them. Just like women are. I have a lot of girlfriends that are in it. Pathetic. Well, if you don't um, like guys who are needy, then I imagine you're not breaking up with any needy guys, right? <laughs> well, most of them tend to be, they become needy. It seems like when oh. you don't want to give them attention, they start craving it, and they, they'll do anything to get it. So. Oh. Well, let me tell you, if I ever dated you, I don't want your attention. <laughs> I don't even want to see you unless I need to get laid, okay? I'll come okay. over. You're my kind of guy, but unfortunately, I mean, as many... Let me women, guess, you're already in another relationship. Oh, no way. Really? I, I don't want to be in another relationship. I was married for too damn long. Really? But, oh, I'll yes. come over there, get the job done. In fact, Edith, I don't want to know your last name. I'll come over, get the job done, get the hell out. <laughs> yeah, see, that would be perfect, but a lot of guys, it's, it's incredible. I thought guys you, didn't All get you have to do is call me when you need me. I come over like the plumber, okay? I come over, I work <laughs> on your pipes. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, well, the reason why I was calling was because um, there's one particular guy that this happened to me with where I took him to dinner. I told him, you know, this is not working out. We both, he I was already wanting to introduce me to the family and everything after a month and a half. And I was like, okay, this is not going to happen. Um, so I told him, I'm sorry, you know, you're a great guy and everything, but we're obviously you want different things in life, and I am not ready for a relationship right now. So he he was pleading his case, and that kind of made me change my strategy. Now I don't know that I'm going to be doing that anymore because he started pleading his case. So then he called me and he said, I think you need to give me a chance. Are you sure you made the right choice? And we started arguing over and over. And I was like, dude, just lose my number. I already deleted your number. Please just lose my number. And and so he called me a month later and left me the longest message I've ever gotten and said that, you know, I don't have a lot of experience in the dating world. And that is why I made the big mistake of breaking up with him. And we had so much chemistry, and that the least I could do is give him a second chance. And I was just, I just couldn't believe it because... It's pathetic. I'm, yes. Yes, I'm thinking, dude, a month later, you're still thinking about well, me? Well, you see what I mean? Why invite these guys out to dinner? Just <laughs> just send them a text message. Leave them a no. voicemail and be done with it. Well, I will because... Because of that experience, now I'm thinking, oh, forget this. I'm just going to do the text. And, I mean, I was just doing it out of respect, but it, it gives you 
know, they get pretty dramatic about the whole situation and kept, I mean, a couple of them have questioned my decision, which that in itself insults me. But, um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I think I'm going to start using what, I think that's a great idea to start texting. When guys don't want to see me anymore, I would rather them just text me. I don't want to talk to them. I don't want to see them. Yeah, right? we're done. That's it. Uh, there's, there's just no need to be talking about something that's not going to go anywhere. And if I don't, the, what I do is, uh, if I don't hear guy after a week, I delete their number and I block them. Look at you! <laughs> because obviously they're not that interested and I'm not going to be sitting around waiting for them. Sounds good to me, Edith. Uh, so I think we're on the same terms here, for God's sake. You know, when it's all over, who needs the big dramatic ending? Just send a text message or an email and be done with it. Come on, Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, yeah. It's the Tom Likas Show. With the shortest commercial breaks we've ever had. Have you noticed that? Don't take my word for it. They got to stop watching Tyler, for God's sake. More show. Shorter breaks. Faster phone calls. You have a chance of getting on the air, for God's sake. 1 800 5 800 Tom. You owe it to someone to give them that one big last meeting when you break up with them. <laughs> Couldn't you just end it with an email or a text or something and be done with it? Let's say hello here to Becky on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi. Um, my two cents is just like if you were married to somebody, they uh, they deserve a phone call to let them know before you post it online. If you have a relation, you don't need to meet with them. Just, you know, call them and say you're getting a divorce. Yeah, but wait a minute. If you've been separated for eight months, isn't that pretty much a foregone conclusion? I don't know if they're going to go back or not, and they're kind of like, the relationship is up in the air. Well, now you know. Now, in this case, now Debbie knows that Jay is not coming back. Well, she knows. Me. Is it the important thing that she got the information? But the only thing is a phone call saying, hello, I'm getting a divorce, and that's it. You know, yeah, But you it's never, it, that is never it. But what? Can't we just try one more time? Come on! Who, who wants to have that conversation? Well, it's not a conversation. It's just like, I'm letting you know. I'm let It is never I'm letting you know. By the way, if you're just letting someone know, why is the method of communication so important? If there's no right for the other person to respond, why do they need to talk to you? Okay, not, uh, what I'm saying is I wouldn't like a meeting. I would like just to get over with, even if it's a phone message or an email, but make it personal. Don't let, you know, the other person just find out because of other people. Yeah, make it personal. Uh, we're done. Thanks for everything. Boom. That's How nice. much is there to say? You've already told me what a creep I am, or you've already told me all the things you don't like about me. What more is there to say? Just to let you know, I'm getting the divorce. That's You've it. already given me all the reasons you won't have sex with me. What, what's left to talk about? It's nothing to talk about. It's just I'm letting you know before you find out. But I don't mind. understand why it's more important to get a phone call than an email or or uh, a posting on the Internet. What's the big deal? I think an email, that would be fine. Just not so everybody knows before you. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll bet all of his friends already knew before he posted it on the Internet. Oh, uh, yes, but you don't, you don't want I'll bet to some of his friends were also her friends. Uh, well, you're, you you got a point there. <laughs> 1-800-5800, Tom. You, you, look, I've been divorced four times. I mean, come on, you learn some things. Let's say hello here to Don on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Father. Son. Uh, I got to tell you this story. Okay. So this girl, my past girlfriend of two years ago, uh, she was going to break up. She uh, wanted to do something special. Uh, so what she did is uh, 
We went while we were uh, on a double date um, at a beach house. What were you doing on a double date? Oh, um, I, we were going out on a double date. She was my girlfriend at the time. We, you know, we we always did stuff, fun stuff like that. And um, well, while we're out on the double date, um, she decides that's the prime moment to break up with me. And she made it. She's like, I just want to have one last special moment with you. One moment where you know something we'll remember together. Why did you just send me a text? I would have loved a text or a phone call. I was so embarrassed. I'm there with my friend and his girlfriend, and I'm walking out of. Um, I'm walking. I'm walking out of the double date now, single. It was the most embarrassing thing in my life. Yeah. Well, uh, the bottom line here is: first of all, you were too young to have a girlfriend. Second of all, never go on a double date. Because the purpose of dating is to get laid. Oh, I, I just started listening to you about uh, about a year ago. My father recommended me to you. Uh, you to me, sorry. I can see why. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, thirdly, I mean, um, <laughs> yes, you're right. You should have just sent you a text message. Yeah. Well, well why did it need to be special? That she didn't owe me anything. If the relationship, relationship is over, what does she owe me? Now, was she? Did, do you think she planned it that way? Like she told her friends, "Watch, I'm going to break up with Don tonight, and I need you guys there as support." Is that what happened? Oh, as soon as it ended, they, as soon as she finished talking to me in private, they were already there to comfort me. I know they already knew. Oh, it's the most embarrassing thing in my entire life. Do you do you really need a girlfriend, Don? No, hell no. I, I father, ever since I've been listening to you, I've 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 been. I've been happier. I've been getting more stuff done. I've been making more money. Uh, no, you don't. You don't need a relationship. But if you do, and if you're gonna end one, just come, just end it. Who cares? You don't owe anything to the other person. I agree with you, Stephen. On the top, like his show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Well, I just I, I figured I had to call because you know I had a relationship about a year ago, and it went on for two years. It was complete BS because, like, I tried to break up with her so much, and I was 20 at the time, and, you know, everything, I wasn't in the right state of mind, and I hadn't even started listening to your show yet. So, obviously, you know, I wasn't I wasn't thick-skinned enough to get the relationship over with. So, I pretty much inadvertently came up, came up with one of the greatest ideas ever. Um, at Christmas time last year, I, you know, definitely decided that I needed to rip the Band-Aid off and just get it over with. So uh, I didn't think of the text thing, but I thought of something, you know, just as good. Uh, I pretty much, you know, told her, okay, you know, we're going to go over to your family's house for Christmas Eve and roll up to her door on Christmas Eve night. And, you know, she came in the car and I was like, oh, one more thing. We're done. By the way, I got to go to my family's, you know, Christmas dinner right now. So she had to get the F out of the car, and I had to go to my Christmas dinner, and she went to her thing, and that was it. Because it was the holidays, there was, she was speechless. She was flabbergasted. All she did was cry her eyes out during, during the holidays, and that was it. Wow. Wow, there you go. You don't need a girlfriend, do you? Uh, no. I mean, I, I honestly, I have a great life right now. I work, I listen to your show every day, and that's pretty much all I need right now. So I, I definitely get my share of tail. So, you know, what more do you need, Tom? I, I totally agree with you. By the way, I had a situation where somebody wanted to break up with me. I know it was coming. And so here's what I said. What's the point? I get one of these calls. By the way, it all started with somebody else I talked to who was always canceling. I did a show about this woman. Uh, we would have a night to meet, and she would always cancel. Day of or day before, whatever, she would always cancel. And then at some point, I didn't hear from her for like a month. And finally, I get a phone call telling me she wanted to have a drink with me. And so I said to her on the phone, I said, if you're just calling to stop seeing me, or if you just want me to have a drink so you can tell me to stop seeing me, we don't have to go through this whole charade. Just tell me. Oh, no, no, it's not that. It's not that. I just wanted to have a drink with you. That's all. Okay, okay but I'm just telling you. It had better not be to break up with me or to stop seeing me or whatever because 
If it is, I'm going to be very upset. I, You know, I've got other things to be doing. And if you're going to tell me you don't want to see me anymore, why waste a whole evening on that? No, 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 no. So I met her, and we had drinks, and we talked, and she spent the better part of the evening telling me, this is absolutely true, she spent the better part of the evening telling me why she didn't think she was good enough for me. And I spent the better part of the evening telling her I, I didn't feel that way or I wouldn't have any interest in her. And so at the end of the evening, I, I continue talking about how we should get together again. We shouldn't wait so long till the next time, blah, 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 blah. And so what happened? Time passed. Maybe it's another week or two. Then she sent me an email to tell me that she wasn't going to see me anymore, which is definitely what she wanted to tell me when we met to have a drink. And so that is when I made up my mind about this. That is when I said, I am done having the big dramatic last meeting. Don't need it. Don't want it. So the next time somebody called me and I had a feeling that was what it was, I just said, you know what? I don't have time for this. So if you have something to say, say it. And I think she's still waiting for the opportunity. Well, you know, a lot of time has passed. I think. Of course, we're still not seeing each other. And every once in a while, she leaves me a message. But I'm telling you. I think she wants to meet with me to tell me she doesn't want to see me anymore. You know what? That horse left the barn a long time ago. We're already not seeing each other. And believe me, it was no big deal for me. If you thought I was going to get all emotional about it, trust me when I tell you. You were not that important to me, dear. Okay? But I don't understand why people feel the need to have this big, it's like they're on a novella or something, they need to have this big, dramatic, final discussion, this big, dramatic, final meeting. I don't need it. If you're done with me, I'm done with you. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Tom. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. Hey, when a relationship is over, especially if there's been a lot of arguing, do you owe it to the other person of some big final scene? Jennifer on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how are you, Tom? Doing great. Um, this is my first time calling. I've been listening to you for a while, and... Um... You know, in the beginning, you know, I used to get upset when you would bring up, you know, um, single moms and stuff. But actually, um, I've experienced something just very drastic. And my daughter is three and a half, and you're absolutely right. I mean, it's very hard um, to find, you know, that compassion that you want, you know, and a father figure for her. But... Um, her father left me when I was seven months pregnant, and he's never seen her before. Um, so I actually mentally lost it, like, when she was around two, and I ended up in the psych ward, and it was really bad. And um, I just, you know, decided to get myself together, and, you know, I was just, it's like an, it's like you're, when you're in an airplane, you know, you you put an oxy, oxygen mask first and then you tend to your kids i was doing the opposite and i got worn out so i just completely just focused on her and um I, I i met this guy at a pumpkin patch and um he had his two kids with him and we hit it off and we we're hanging around at the pumpkin patch going on rides and he asked he asked me would you like to go to denny's you know Kids are starving. It's eleven o'clock at night. I said sure, and ask. And then after Danny's, he says, um, "Well, we're going to go to the park. You know, pedal on a boat and go on a bike ride. Would you like to join us?" I said sure. And then his daughter was telling me, "I, I adored his kids." Um, his daughter was telling me, "You know, my dad never brings anybody unless if they're really special." And you know, she she was just talking about how much she likes me. So then her daughter gets on the phone and calls her mom. And uh, the mother said, you know, the mother was asking, 
her how her day was, and she told her mother that I was there. And so within five minutes, his ex comes pounding on the door and pushed the door and said, uh, uh, you know, we had an agreement that if you were to ever meet, if you were to ever uh, have a girl over, that I would meet her. So right there, I was just like a little, you know, nervous and stuff. And um, so from this is how naive I was because I guess I'm in a, I know I'm in a, in a vulnerable stage where I shouldn't be dating. Um, I got hurt because he, I should know better, never called, just sent me text messages. And and then I, I asked him a couple of days ago, actually uh, yesterday, I, I texted him and I said, sweetie, are we okay? And he just texted me and he said, um, are you there? Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. And then he just texted me and he said, um, uh, I don't think I could give you what you want. There we and go. I don't think we should continue or feel like uh, something like that. To All that right. effect, but that's the point. Hey, zero tolerance policy. Yeah. You can't say the BS word on the air. It's one of the words you can't say. Go to myspace.com slash Tom Likas. If you really honestly don't know the words you can't say in a phone call to a radio station, I wrote them out for you. <laughs> Go to my blog at myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Jennifer on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Great. Good. First time, first time caller. I just wanted to um, maybe ask you a personal question. Um, when you got divorced from your four wives, did any of them have a discussion with you, or was it all done over the phone? Or well, first know? of all, I was the one who did the breaking up. Uh, in one case, uh, one of my wives had an affair, but even in that case, she wanted to, you know, just move forward. She said, and I was the one who had to break up the relationship. Okay. This is a common problem when you're a public figure or you make good money or whatever. <laughs> they would like to move forward despite the fact that you're miserable. Right. Um, what would you suggest for someone that has kids with somebody? Um, because in my in my opinion, I think that doing it over the phone or emailing is tacky. I think when you invest yourself in, in somebody or a, a relationship... You know, I think it has to do with whether, you know, if you have already told the other person all the things that are wrong with them, then I don't think they owe it to you to give you one more time to take a swing. Well, I'm not talking about taking a swing. I'm saying doing it in person, not having a date or anything like that. Just, you know, sit down one on one and just, you know, have everything out and say this is what, you know, went wrong. Move on with your life. But I think, you know... If you're dating somebody for a couple of months and, you know, I can understand or you want to let the relationship go, so, yeah, over the phone and email would seem appropriate. But somebody you've invested time, years, you know, and had a kid with, it's like, come on now. Yeah, that, but that again, it, it all depends on how, look, if somebody leaves for work and says, bye, honey, see you later, and then never comes home again, that's tacky. But if somebody has been hearing from you about how they don't take the garbage out and they're a slob and you don't like their friends and they smoke too much weed, why should that person then turn around and give you still another opportunity uh, to tell them why you think they're inadequate? I hear you. I have lived with women like this, okay? I live with a woman who would not make dinner. Oh, God. Then when I would make dinner, she would stand over me and tell me, don't use that pot. Use this one. Oh. Now, <laughs> you know what? I, I don't need you living in my house and eating my groceries. I, I can take care of picking out the pots and pans myself. I give you credit for that. There's not a lot of men that take care of themselves like I'm sure you do. Well, the point is I took care of myself and I drop kicked that person out of my house. <laughs> well, there you go, Tom. I give you credit. But uh, believe me, if I could have sent a text message, I would, except she wouldn't leave my house. 
All right, Tom. Well, it was nice talking to you. Jennifer, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Brian. Oh, man. Uh, this is a great subject. I completely forgot about this until you started talking about this. This whole, like, why doesn't she just send you a text message or call you and call it off or whatever? I don't need the big dramatic breakup. I just want to hear, you know what, I don't think this is going to work out for the both of us. Let's just move on. All right, so my story is I took out this girl to dinner. Uh, like, she's just, like, incredible at sex. That's why I took her out to dinner. Normally, I wouldn't even do this. And we went to this nice restaurant, and I bought this really nice meal and so forth. And, like, she was all for it. And uh, we got done. Uh, the bill came out to be about 80 bucks. I mean, not really that high of a high of a meal. I mean, I've spent more just on myself. So we're on our way back or whatever, like maybe two-mile drive from the restaurant to, like, where we live because we lived about because we lived about an hour away from each other. Or not even an hour, like five minutes away from each other. And she breaks up with me like halfway back in the car, like right after we leave the restaurant. I'm just, and I pulled over on the side of the road. I was like, are you kidding me, you bitch? I was like, you couldn't have done this before the meal? Yeah, why waste your evening having a meal with somebody who's going to break up with you? Yeah, I was like, man, I'm having a really great time. I was like, I'm going to get late tonight. It's going to be a good night for me. And like, I had a big smile on my face when I left. We get in the car, we're driving, and then... You know what? I don't think this is going to work out between the two of us. I was like, well, I already knew it wasn't going to work out between the two of us because I'm gone all the time. But, you know, you could you could have done this, you know, maybe an hour earlier. I agree with you. Obviously. Brian, thank you for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. You can also visit our website where we stream live. It's blowmeuptom.com. Go there right now while you're thinking about it. Blowmeuptom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.